started in the in, uh, in, in learning about radios, everything that I'd learned. I've been doing this for about 10 years, and um, so I thought, well, it might be better just to go ahead and cover uh, the All American Five radio, you know, rather than try and, and you know talk about every different kind of radio and get all uh, involved or, you know, this may be a little bit more specific and so everybody can kind of follow along. Um, I, I've, uh, I've worked on all kinds of different things. Now I'm getting into uh, aligning uh, uh, FM radios using a sweep generator and oscilloscope, that kind of thing. And so, and then I've done transformer sets. I've done, you know, a lot of different kinds of radios. And uh, plus, let me say that also, uh, using some of the books that I talked about earlier, and then also I've gotten an extremely large amount of help from the uh, members in the club that uh, know a whole lot more about this than I do, they've been doing it for longer, and uh, Blake Dietz and Lyles and Sonny and, uh, and, and George Kirkwood, you know, have been nothing but uh, 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 willing to always help out and answer any questions and guide me in the right direction. Uh, I still consider myself somewhat of a newbie at this, uh, only having done it for about 10 years. So uh, bear with me on some of this stuff. I've uh, tried to put this together so that uh, everybody can get kind of a knowledge and an idea of how these radios function. Uh, so with that, uh, yeah. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, and we touched a little bit on this uh, person here earlier when we had a discussion, a little bit about safety. The first thing I wanted to talk about, these little radios can be dangerous, especially some of the earlier ACDC sets that were uh, made with um, non-polarized plugs back in those days, and the chassis, uh, if you happen to plug it in so that the hot lead was running through the switch, you know, then that's going to make that chassis hot or at 120 volts. And uh, if, if you are standing uh, to where your body is grounded and you, you get mixed up with that, I mean, it's going to run all the way through you. And, I mean, even uh, 120 volts in some cases could be lethal. So, I mean, it's, it's nothing to mess with. It is, it is dangerous. For that reason, on any of these radios, you uh, always want to use uh, what they call an isolation transformer. If, if nobody, if for some of you that don't know what that is, that isolates the uh, 120 signal coming in is on a primary out of the wall, and then it transfers the uh, the one to one 120 to the secondary of the transformer, and that is plugged into the radio. So the only way that that can get back to ground is back through to the secondary of that uh, isolation transformer, that means that you're not going to be grounded, it's not grounded to earth. So in that respect, you could get shocked, but at least it's not going to go clear through your body and go back to earth ground. The other one is uh, that when I restore one of these radios or work on one, uh, I don't know, care what kind of cord it's got on it, and if the cord is any good at all, but I always put a, a polarized plug on, like one of these, a modern polarized plug. And you take your, your meter and your own meter and you figure out which spade is which. The wide spade on these polarized plugs is for the neutral wire. And the small straight plug is for the power wire coming out of your AC plug. And so you always want to wire the, uh, the power wire into the circuit going to the rectifier tube and the filaments and then you want to wire the wide one which is a neutral through the switch and most most of uh, the later uh, ACDC radios used what they call a floating or a, a B minus that was floated above the chassis or not hooked directly to the chassis which you know obviously is a lot safer but even with that, you still always want to use a, an isolation transformer when you're working on one of these radios. So um, I have uh, a couple of different examples here. This is a, a, an octal tube ACDC radio that I restored. This one over here is more like with the schematic of the radio that we're dealing with. This has uh, got the seven pin miniature tubes in it. and uh, we're gonna, I wanted to cover that uh, in uh, the different st uh, stages of the radio. Um, the 
first thing I wanted to talk about before we get into, actually let me get into the schematic and uh, we'll start with that. Uh, before we get into the stages, I wanted to, just, to talk a little bit about uh, the LC circuits that are in the radio and that is uh, how the radio is tuned and also the, how the uh, IF uh, transformers also function. Um, LC circuits are inductance and capacitance and they form a resonance to form a resonance circuit depending on for instance if it is a variable uh, circuit like your tuner or uh, oscillator tuner they are variable capacitance. Now there are some radios that have a fixed capacitance and they vary the inductor with usually iron slugs if you've seen any of those. Uh, they made a few of those um, uh, but most all radios or the majority of them are uh, variable uh, capacitors with your uh, uh, in your uh, RF and, and uh, oscillator both. Um, when resonance occurs capacitive reactants and inductive reactants are equal and at that point the LC circuit is purely resistive at the resonant frequency and all other frequencies are a complex uh, impedance. Both reactants are frequency dependent and they're inverse to each other. The tuned IF and RF transformers are LC circuits used in radio and IF transformers are affixed and that's usually at 455 in the uh, more modern or I say like the World War II era on but not always. Uh, the older, some of the older radios you can have an IF uh, transformer that's say at 175 kilocycles or maybe 262 some of those type of circuits uh, that, were, that were made back like in the 30's and that type of thing. Um, the RF and oscillator transformers are variable capacitance with a fixed inductance. RF for the broadcast band in our example radio uh, that we're using here in the schematic is uh, 540 to 1650. Now the oscillator runs at the IF or the 455 above that. So they actually the oscillator is running at 995 kilocycles to 2105. Alignment of the tracking is done by trimmer capacitor on the oscillator, section of the variable capacitor. And they have you do that at 1650 and peaks the signal on the antenna section trimmer at 1500. Now this particular radio does not have, if you um, take a look here, oops, oops, there we go. If you take a look here, it has a trimmer capacitor on the oscillator right here. And, and of course you have your trimmer capacitor on the uh, antenna circuit for the uh, high frequency but it does not have what they call a low pass to adjust the, uh, the uh, trimmer at say 600. A lot of radios have that. This one does not, it uses uh, what they call a cut plate and according to what the manufacturer figures is that your radio is going to stay, uh, and it's going to track all the way through the band without that adjustment. Um, I'm not sure that it, it will exactly, but <laughs> that's what their sometimes. theory is anyway. Yes, yeah, sometimes. So anyway, um, uh, let's see, where was I? Um, oh, wrong one. But anyway, uh, moving on, uh, we wanted to talk about And the IF transformers, okay, they're all aligned for peak response by the four trimmer capacitors, C6, C7, C9, and C10, and that is right here. Okay, um, so then we wanted to move on next to, and start with the power supply. Question? You bet. Yeah, before you get off of the IF and uh, RF alignment, my question is, can you align one of these radios just using a VTVM and not using an oscilloscope? Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, on, uh, uh, you know, AM band radios or standard broadcast, just a standard broadcast radio, I don't use an oscilloscope at all. I just use a signal generator, and if I want to use a VTVM to, to watch the 
voltage closer rather than uh, relying on my ears to peak the IS, but you can do it that way as well. But um, I don't use uh, uh, anything fancy other than a, a single generator that has that is modulated and for, uh, uh, to set the IFs and that type of thing. And then you can also do that if you want to peak the um, the uh, uh, RF alignment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So the power supply, uh, 120 volts AC. It's connected and uh, through the B minus, uh, right at the power switch. Um, that's right here. This radio actually was a um, clock radio, and I just changed this a little bit here and got the clock switch out of there and just put a regular on off switch going to B minus. Now, these indicators here are going to B minus, and that is a dedicated line uh, that's uh, not the chassis. This, uh, this right here uh, indicates that that's going to chassis, and that indicates a capacitor between uh, B minus and chassis right there, that 0.22. Um, the power line feeds in, and this uh, capacitor 0.05 is what they call a line safety capacitor. Uh, the line splits off right here and feeds the filament. And these uh, is, a, is a filament string or series circuit through all the tubes. And uh, you have 35, 50, and 12, 312 volt tubes. That adds up to exactly 121 volts, which is perfect for you know, using up uh, the 120 volts feeding in to run that series string. Mike, question? Yes, sir. Uh, on that bypass capacitor, I think it says 0.05. Do you bother with a safety cap on that? Um, application or not? You can, and I've heard um, some information about using a X or XY type capacitor in that uh, location, and that's something that is uh, um, to your own preference whether or not you want to use that. It's designed so that if, the, uh, if they're short circuit, it will uh, actually use that not as a fuse, but it will uh, uh, it'll go ahead and blow that capacitor. and. Um, they have capacitors that are specifically designed as line safety caps, and then that can be used in that location. So you don't you don't use the X or the Y. So I have I I've, I've got some and I have used them. But you, you don't know. use them all the time. I don't use them all the time. I'm shocked. You know. I'm shocked. Yeah, you would be. <laughs> you will be. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't built with them. Mm -hmm. No, they weren't. They were built with wax paper capacitors, and yeah. so you know maybe that's my excuse. I don't know, Sid. These modern ones shouldn't fail. They should be fine. The modern, yeah. Um, but you know what that mash is in there for? Is also to take some of the hum out of the, the AC as well, isn't it? It's a noise suppressor for the on-off switch. Oh, it's a noise suppressor. Sonny's giving me some good information. So yeah, that's like I say, I'm a newbie at this, and, and any information that uh, I get wrong or anything you can help me with, I do appreciate. Uh, he said it's a noise suppressor for the on-off switch as well. Yeah, the radio worked fine without it. Oh yeah, yeah, it would. So what what noise is the, the, noise, switch, the noise that the switch makes? Uh, the, the, the click on and off. off. You get a little static. Okay. Oh, static. Ah, okay. And that suppresses that. But some, that's really it good also, to know. Isn't it also true that it's to take the yeah. RF that comes, you know, to, to get rid of the RF that comes in on the AC line? To a certain point, yeah. It's yeah. not all that effective, but it, it will. You need a much smaller capacitor to be, be more effective. Yeah, because that's a, that's a low pass capacitor because it's rated at 0.05. Uh, we'll get into that too. Um, then your line that feeds the rectifier tube, this is a dropping resistor, drops current and voltage uh, somewhat. Uh, 22 ohm resistor right here. It's, I think it's a pretty fair wattage, but it doesn't indicate what that is. So you have your voltage, AC voltage, 120 volts at 60 cycles, hits the plate right here, and then this, is, this rectifies the circuit. And the emission flow from the plate to the cathode will only allow the positive uh, emissions to pass through. And so you end up with just a direct current, or in other words, just the positive end of the, uh, of the cycle. If you look over here at, uh, at Blake's signal right here, this is incoming AC right here on this uh, demonstrator. 
and then you have the rectified, it only shows just the half waves above the zero line. So that's direct current right there at the rectifier too. If everybody can see this over here on that uh, on this demonstrator. Uh, from there, the DC voltage at the cathode still has that, that heavy 60 cycles coming in off the AC line ripple in it. So it's uh, if you were to, to just hook this up directly right here, you'd have a tremendous amount of hum. That's what this uh, filter system is here of these two divider capacitors and these two electrolytic capacitors. They're both rated at 40 uh, UF at 150 volts each. This line here, now this is a design of this radio only, okay? This line here, it feeds, and let me go back to the main schematic, it just feeds over to the screen from here and uh, actually from here this break branches off and that feeds through the transformer and to the plate, okay? Then you have a separate resistor and then a third capacitor rated at 20 UF and that is your actual B minus line but that feeds separately to the screen and then from there to all of the rest of the radio on all your uh, high power. You meant B plus. B plus. That is your B plus line right here. Absolutely. So it's just kind of a design change of the way they made this particular radio. A lot of radios don't do this. They'll have two, maybe three capacitors and, uh, and, and some resistors in the filter circuit. But they'll feed both the uh, uh, screen and plate up here and then they'll branch usually the screen off before it hits the output transformer. But that's just the way this radio was made. Um, moving on. To, I wanted to head back actually over to, let me get the, get the, the next, the converter stage. And on the converter stage, there are four functions on the stage. It tunes, amplifies, and receives the signal. It generates an unmodulated RF uh, signal, the oscillator signal of its own at a frequency different from the received signal. It mixes the locally generated signal with the received signal, and it maintains a constant frequency difference between the uh, locally, lo local oscillator signal and the uh, received tuned signal that the radio is tuned to. So that has to do with what we were talking about um, uh, in the early example of uh, how the uh, uh, IF is 455 above the uh, received signal. So modulator RF is, is fed uh, through the um, antenna into the mixer grid. Try to get this thing to work, there we go. This grid right here, uh, right on pin seven, right out of the antenna. And the, uh, also, there's an external antenna and then it's also through the variable capacitor right here and then it's, uh, it's uh, associated trimmer as well and that's sent to chassis. And the uh, ABC line, we'll talk about that later, is helping to set the bias for that RF section or that pin right there. Then we talk about the... Um, question. Go ahead, Sid. And that very, very low value capacitor right off the aerial. Yeah. I imagine that's there to tune the antenna, shorten the antenna cord. Yeah, that is for an external antenna connection, and then it has that, uh, though that's not a trimmer uh, actually at all, that's just a fixed capacitor, yeah, but it's at very, very, very low capacitance, and so it's going to let, uh, since that's a low capacitance, it's going to be a high pass to let the RF through. The safety feature also serves as an isolation from the from, ground. From like uh, um, 120 volts point of the antenna. Right. And lightning and all of that as well, I imagine. But I don't know if that no, would stop it. Do no, apart. it would. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of working voltage would that capacitor have? What's that? What kind of working voltage would that capacitor have to exhibit? 600. Probably, I would just put a regular 600 volt uh, capacitor in there. I imagine you could probably get by with a 400, you know. Uh, just about anything. This, just about anything, yeah. It's going to be probably a mica capacitor. You know, at that okay. at that capacitance rating. Um, 
Then uh, on the um, modulator, um, the input example that we use is uh, we're let's say we're we're tuned to a thousand kilocycles on our radio, then uh, the oscillator signal is going to be at fourteen fifty five coming in. So okay, question. Yeah. Is this always a characteristic of these five tube radios? There is no RF application. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of times, not because you you. That's why you'd have a, a sixth tube, which would be an RF amplifier, and they don't have it. It feeds the antenna straight into the converter tube. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then you'd have an all American six, I guess. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoops. Getting stuff in the way. So anyway. The local oscillator, it's putting in a signal right here, and I don't know if anybody can tell me what kind of an oscillator coil that is, or if it even has a name, I'm not sure. But it has the uh, oscillator coil here, looks like that it is, uh, is, is floating away from the actual coil right here, and then your uh, local oscillator signal is fed right into the second grid. I believe that's pin one, right here. And it also uses, and I'm using this capacitor. Now you know that this is going to B minus, and then the uh, tuner is going to chassis. Actually, both of them are. So you could also say that uh, this resistor right here, since chass since the capacitor, I mean the cathode rather, is going to ground, is helping to set the bias for the oscillator section on pin one. Well, you know that's the main bias. Resistor for it the is. Back That's right. Or down the lower right corner also yeah. serves as coupling yeah. back for the uh, AC portion of the signal. It does. It does because as you can see, this is B minus and this is chassis here, and they're separated by that uh, 0 0.22 capacitor right there, and that plays right into this right here as well. Just as Sonny was saying. Um, what happens at this point in the tube is these two signals are beat together and uh, to form four actual frequencies that come off the plate right here. And we have an example of a thousand uh, kilocycles that is tuned here on the variable capacitor. Then we're going to have 1455 coming in on the oscillator. And as you beat those two together, you will have two heterodyne uh, frequencies that add to that. You're going to have the sum of the two, the 1455 plus the thousand, so you're going to have 2455, and then you're going to have the difference. And of course, obviously, the difference between the two is 455. Of those four frequencies, as it hits the first IF transformer, only one is accepted, and that is 455. And the other three are all rejected. You actually have four signals. Sum the difference and the two. Right, that's what I said. There's four, yeah, four frequencies, exactly. The sum, the difference, and then the uh, RF signal and the oscillator signal. And the amplification is done through the uh, screen voltage right here and also the plate voltage, and those are feeding directly right off of B+. Plus. Usually on these radios, uh, the B plus is uh, normally somewhere right around 90 volts. That can vary, you know, depending on the design of the radio. And uh, they're usually set to accept 117 volts. Most line voltage around the country, you know, is about 120. So it's going to be in that neighborhood. Um, is a Class A amplifier at this point? I believe so. I believe it is. Any idea of the amount of amplification occurring at this stage? A lot. Quite a bit. Thousand, hundred, million? You know, I don't know what that is because I didn't really look it up before I did the talk, but I think that's something that uh, we could probably do Just an and investigate at a later time. And maybe another, maybe another t uh, tech talk or something about yeah. tube amplification would be a real good one. Yeah. So tube manuals before. Yeah. Look at the schematic. It'll tell you the stage gain. Yeah, it can tell you stage gain, that's right. So we're going to move on. Let me switch this here to the next one. To the IF amplifier stage. Now that we have our 455 fed into the T1 here, and uh, what 
basically does the uh, function of the IF amplifier stage is to tune and amplify the intermediate frequency. It doesn't have a whole lot of uh, crazy function uh, on that. You have uh, your screen, which is your B plus voltage, is being fed through the primary of the of, of both the uh, transformers, and uh, on uh, on the secondary that feeds the plate. Actually, the this uh, second IF transformer and it feeds the screen as well with the high voltage, and then your um, your cathode. You got a cathode load resistor right here, 150 ohm, and then the grid is coming off the secondary of the first IF transformer. Um, this, um, I wanted to get back into that just a little bit. The tuning function of the IF amp is accomplished by the action of the four tuned circuits of the input and output transformers, T1 and T2. Both are tuned sharply to the IF frequency. The four tuned circuits make possible the selectivity of a super heterodyne receiver. The amplification is dependent on two factors, the design of the transformers, T1 and T2, and the amplification of the two. The input IF transformer and is the coupling device between the converter tube and the IF. The uh, T2, uh, which uh, in both these uh, transformers right here, T1 and T2, are actually the same part number in the radio. So in this particular set, they're identical. They don't always have to be identical, but they always have to be a match set. Grid bias is maintained by the cathode bias resistor R2, 150 ohm, and the ABC voltage. So the ABC voltage is affecting this because it feeds right in here, and uh, it affects how the grid is either going to be added to the minimum bias or, uh, or just very close to it, depending on what the signal strength is coming in on, on the AVC line, on your negative voltage. And let's see, I believe that was all for that. Any questions on this stage? Okay. You said earlier you can tune this with your ear? Yeah. Oh, that's to peak the IS. Sometimes, you know, if you get real good at it, or if you've been doing it forever, you don't really need to use a VTVM. Uh, I started using one because I didn't have a lot of experience, and then you can watch to see, and usually I would hook that up on the voice coil of the speaker and then I look at my um, uh, AC at that point and then watch the meter go up and down as I'm tuning it. But you can listen to the audible note coming out of the speaker uh, uh, made by the signal generator and it'll get louder and then softer depending on where you peek it at. So you can just do it by your ear. Well, yeah. One thing you absolutely need then is a signal generator that yeah. you can modulate. Yes, yes, you, you need a modulated signal generator. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, can I make a comment real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sit. Our ears aren't really designed to detect that small of a difference in the signal. So you could be way off one side or the other using your ear. But anybody with a smartphone can download an audio <laughs> application that will read, as far as a meter indicator, Different you sold it up to the radio, to the speaker. Exactly. Oh, that's great. It'll, it'll that's you, good information. That's, that's awesome. The slightest difference in sound, and the phone will detect the increase or the decrease. Oh, modern technology. It's just another way to go. That's great. Yeah, I hadn't heard about or thought about. It. That's awesome. Thank you, Sid. I want to know the name of that application. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move on. So now we know that basically this. Uh, uh, IF amplifier is tuning and amplifying the circuit and in T2 it's going to send it on to the first audio and detector stage. Now this tube here has got several functions involved on this and it's uh, not only it uh, is the detector for the radio but also the first audio as well and it's a combined tube that way. Early Early radios, early uh, uh, a lot of radios would, uh, especially uh, transformer sets, would would have two different separate tubes. One would be a detector, and then the other a first audio. But uh, later on, they combined uh, a lot of radios. A, a real, really common tubes are like a 12s.